Specific. We, I thought we were going like, to start. Is it now recording? I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah we, we, I thought opened. we were starting like just a nasty statement to say oh, to that's, somebody. That was good, nice. Yeah, it sucks. Straight, it's, it's you not, you not, hit the mark well and truly. It's not specifically nasty because all you're saying is somebody's mum, but it just sounds like an insult. Yeah. Because it's like your mum. It's my favourite bit in Ghostbusters. Oh yeah, your mother. Yeah. Too but... madre. Eh? <laughs> no, we're doing it internationally. <laughs> <laughs> all right then. Maybe we're just steering away from that then. Okay. Well, yeah. Welcome to Stuff Sucks. Uh, this is our spin-off series. It's meta. Yeah. The positivity has gone on too long. Mm. So, mm. as opposed to things we like. Deep seed has been growing. <laughs> the roots are deep. Uh, the roots are deep. So, yeah. Welcome to our new half hour of hatred. Stuff sucks. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm Jan. Yeah. I'm Jim. Fuck you. I'm Alf. So, what does anyone hate? I hate politics oh, <laughs> oh, man, don't do that <laughs> it's not even worth the conversation I think we're all in agreement with that one Please, like something else Jim because that, oh, that's an episode see what else actually something no, specific I, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can open on this or are you, did you have something more specific you I got something brewing but like no I, well, it's just because mine's no. fairly relevant to, on. to, to, oh. to that one this is all to do with Mark Duggan. Now, British people may be aware, although some of them won't be aware, I'm sure, but any international audience, basically a gentleman from a borough of London was shot by the police and it sparked riots in Tottenham, the borough in question, and that and caused riots across the country as well for a few days and you know a lot of bad shit happened out of it. Now, granted, this chap was probably naughty in some way we're not entirely sure there's still ongoing investigations to do with all this the latest is that he was a nefarious chap and the armed police did what they were supposed to do and it's all fair enough or whatever but as i say it's ongoing we don't really know but the media they do this a lot we're totally aware that they do this you know when they get somebody like this they will draw the photos to find something that makes that person look as guilty or innocent as the media wishes to portray this person. In this particular case with Mark Duggan, the photo that was used, it was used by all the press, it was in the news all the time. He looks like, you know, a cold-eyed killer kind of thing. He's wearing a grey hoodie and, you know, he's there. When you see the uncropped photo, where before it's been edited... It shows that he's holding a stone plaque in his hand for his dead daughter and Mm. the photo was taken from the funeral day. And you think, yes, okay, we know that they do this, that they go and they find the worst pictures. But that is out of order. That is fucking so low to use a photo like that to paint somebody as a criminal. Like, It's just... It's completely out in the context of it and like just the uh, the nature and the intrusion of someone's life. Like that. It Cold-blooded. sucks, and beyond it sucking, it is also bang out of order. Yeah, well, there we go. Got that off my chest. Mm, that did suck. Mm. Is sucking. But the, I mean, they've the, done the, it loads. I mean, also the also the aspect of yeah. like the rights themselves sucked in the fact like. Um, it wasn't. People didn't even know who fucking Mark Duggan was. They just uh, wanted an excuse to fucking go out and rob shit. And there were a lot of dickheads that seized upon the opportunity to do so. And really, if it was like a politically motivated sort of like movement, that would be far more inspiring than just greedy shit. I, I don't know. I think, it, <clears throat> in many respects, it was a. You know, it was the spark that kind of set off and highlighted a lot of social problems that are perhaps occurring you know there's a lot of fucking anti society it's certainly a hell of a lot of anti police attitude the length and breadth of the country and not necessarily even 
anti what people feel the police should be there for, but anti like what the police are actively doing. You know, Specifics. they are they are the henchmen of the government, and that's not what they're supposed to be there for. Like you know, they're meant to be working for us, not working for them to keep us in line. And it, I think, feels more and more, especially in deprived areas. And it was something that many of the residents in Tottenham said was, you know, they feel like the police are the wardens of the zoo like you know it's it's they're not there to protect them they're there to police them and i think that erodes a community like you know and it causes a lot of problems well that's one of the things that sort of like got highlighted in this sense of like it was like also highlighted the sense of capitalism that's born into a lot of the youth at the minute when people aren't happy to as much to rely on themselves, imagination, whatever, like the way we used to play in, in the muck when we were kids, is more about having shit, and you need loads of shit to make yourself happy. This and is the uh, quantity of life, not quality of life mm. kind of argument that, mm. you know, greed is, is beyond the greed that most people can sort of say is horrendous at the upper level. It's petered into all aspects of everyone's life, like, you know, that that everyone is greedy for things like uh, of a certain level that it, relative deprivation is the the is one of the terms used by sociologists to describe like you'll always feel like you want more or whatever I'm trying to fill on, the vacuum yeah, yeah based yeah. on the fact that you live in a society alongside people with more therefore it, it creates that desire for more constantly. Well, it's like that stigma you're talking about where the the have-nots feel like the haves are running things and it's all in the uh, the haves benefits then the have-nots will try and grab shit Mm. They, it's a, it's a crazy thing, and I like, you know, they've proper squeezed the masses in recent years. Ooh. they have though. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's the, the global recession. Not one of the top ten percent earners have really lost anything. Global recession. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they've not made quite as much, but they haven't lost anything. Their yeah. quality of life hasn't changed. Well, that's the steady realization that everyone's. But everyone through. else is in the bottom sections has proper been squeezed and has got bad, like bad. Oh yeah, but it's like the, it's like when you talk about first world problems. I mean, the, one of the things that keeps the system stable, like stable, is the fact that as long as you're living a good quality of life, there's a lot of uh, shit you're willing to eat just to keep that life. Yeah, but uh, then people, people, you know, the number of food kitchens that. Have, and food banks that have had to spring up to feed people in the country, you know, these, these aren't necessarily getting talked about it, it, in the press in the same in the same level. But people are actually struggling to put food on the table. And it's, and it's ridiculous and alarming when the like uh, the number of people sort of like dying from uh, just uh, ineffective heating of their own houses. That's shocking in itself. Wait, but again, they can't afford to heat their own houses. Well, yeah, but I mean, the, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, the the thing is, because everyone's feeling the squeeze, but we feel it in the sense that we're we're really pissed off about it, but we're not willing to do much about it because we don't have to live in sewers in Bogota. We don't have to fucking. No, like, and also though that people have got to just keep working or just keep doing what they're doing. They don't have the opportunity yeah. to go and take a day or a couple of days to go and protest or whatever because they have to put food on the table or provide for the families. Like that's one of the psychological aspects of it though, because there is that very much so in Britain specific the grin and bear it attitude of it makes you stronger to just to fucking take it on the shoulders and sort of like go about your daily business and sort of like live your life when plus not, we're lazy. Yeah, well, well no, they've also no, it's they've like created so much bureaucracy. Mm. They've created a, such a broad spectrum of focus for our anger and the things that we dislike that only there's only ever a small portion of us that really kick off at any one time. Is that they, that? It's it's a it, there's an issue that will push enough yeah. people's buttons <clears throat> that make them go and protest. But that number of protesters isn't enough, and because they keep making us burst in small groups, it's never a big enough protest for anything ever to really get done about it. Right. This is why I think we should take the crown and rule England. Well, I just like Game of Thrones it and we'll invite them all to a party, but then we won't actually offer them any kind of sanctuary. Yeah, well, King Ralph, those fuckers. I think we could... I mean, why not? Why well, that's we? the plan. Let's get it done. <laughs> any other stuff that's been sucking this week? Um, <laughs> right, so, yeah, that all fucking sucks. Uh, my thing that really sucks was at New Year's, uh, I watched the Graham Norton show and... It, all, in, all in all, the show is actually quite interesting because he has some like really fucking kooky sort of like guest lists. And uh, Graham Norton now he's not on like five times a week. It's back to being funny, which is awesome. But like they had the the Python, uh, oh. uh, the Pythons on, 
And like, uh, obviously, Monty Python sort of like heavyweights of comedy, especially with like back in the day and stuff. But now they're actually reforming, <laughs> uh, and you're seeing them sort of like as they come out, and they're really fucking open about their situation. And um, it was just particularly like sucked because they're, they're all. Uh, apart from being so like quite old and kooky now, they're all dead honest about the fact that like they don't get on well, and all the things that they were saying during the interview uh, all lent towards the idea that basically they're coming out and they're doing a rehash of their old stuff. As John Cleese tried to note that like uh, no one wants to see new stuff; they want to see their old stuff, so they're just going to do their old stuff. And no. the fact they're all sort of like disconnected; they don't look like a group anymore. And it seems to be sort of like this is effectively like money just to basically give them comfortable lives until they're ready to meet their maker. Yeah, I'd I'd love for this reunion to be an amazing spectacle of hilarity, but I just can't see it happening. I think much like seasons four and five of Community, I'm just going to completely avoid it just to save myself the heartache. Five's been weird. It's worth watching, but it's strange. Mm. Well, I mean, the thing is like that's much the same principle with like the Pythons, like all of the stuff that made sense for them to sort of like do comedy together, it just doesn't seem to exist anymore, and there was like really weird and awkward scenes with like um, with John Cleese, where he was sort of like just acting a bit kooky, pretending to storm off, and then he crawled up behind them and everyone looked a bit awkward, it's just, ah it sucked balls man Tom Cleese is the one who needs it the most. Tom Cleese. John Cleese. Well, he keeps getting gouged through divorces, doesn't Three he? Three divorces. Yeah, I mean, like, there, uh, there's a, a couple of them. I think Terry Gilliam was quite quiet. I don't imagine he needs the money, but a couple of the others certainly do. Well, the, if, if Gilliam needs the money as much as, you know, if anyone needs money. Well, yeah, but he's like, produced more work recently, hasn't he? That I assume is sort of like, still giving him royalties and whatnot. Yeah, he's not done much for a while, though. He has problems with the system because, you know, he doesn't get on the studios very well and you know Dr. Parnassus which is an awesome film but it did not, not do well and in Hollywood you're only as good as your last film but he's got a new one coming out called and to be fair Zero it is, Zero. That, like, uh, certain elements were against him his like, lead did die rather tragically in short that life. fucking sucked yeah. yeah that did suck that Stop sucked thinking. the death of Heath Ledger mm. Mm. yeah just when he was sort of like um yeah, fulfilling his destiny as an actor. Maybe that's the like, thing that isn't it? like he died so young and beautiful. But like, I still think he had a lot of good work left in him. It's so weird that though, sucks because there were lots of things in Doctor Parnassus that were kind of about that, about mm. Hollywood shit. It's very strange, very I, Illuminati. I'm actually, I've never watched it. To be fair, I'm just, I know. I mean, like, it's like obviously a lot of good talent stepped in to fill the void and all the rest of it, but. I like it, but I don't think anybody else on the planet does. Somebody likened it to me to Baron von Munchausen. Yeah, it's got yeah. a lot of elements of that. Okay. Well, have you seen it? I've seen it, yeah. I I wasn't overly struck on it. It felt a little bit patchwork, but obviously uh, uh, there was an element of that due to notable gaps in casting. So. Yeah, we covered it quite well, drafting in the other three fellas for the dreamy sequency stuff. Yeah. Whatever it is. I think it worked and Tom Waits played the devil so mm -hmm. that's always fun to see we can't talk about Tom Waits because there is no way that that man sucks in any way Tom Waits does not suck uh. so something that I think that does suck however and I think we're going to get some resistance from Jim here is David Lynch what? <laughs> David Lynch sucks man that's bullshit um uh, I'm familiar with a lot of his work, and I'm a big fan of Twin Peaks. Blue Velvet is creepy as fuck. Oh, but notably with Twin Peaks, he directed one episode, the pilot, yeah, and one film. Ah. And the pilot, I watched that pilot, and I never wanted to watch another episode of Twin Peaks ever again. God. It was that bad. Oh. It's just filled with Laura Palmer's mum crying at the camera, and oddness. Du, du. And fucking Julie Cruz, she can fuck off. She the chick who was in Wayne's World. No, she does the music. What really? Uh, for like, Twin Peaks. You didn't like the music. Well, I the don't like sense. her in the music. Mm. So yeah, his two major contributions to that series are almost unwatchable. He's amazing when he plays Gordon Cole. Yeah. But yeah, and his films as well. I've never taken to them. Christ, man. Like, I can't knock that he's an artist of sorts, but I'm, I'm a narrative man. 
and he doesn't like to play ball with narrative. He did all right with Dune, and again, a lot of people hate that. Oh, really David Lynch. Dune. I forget yeah. that. No, it's a great film. I've, I've not actually seen Dune. Dune. I probably will one day. It's got a sting in it, and that puts me off. Yeah, he sucks. But he oh sucks good. no, he he sucks in the right way. He, yeah. Like he fulfills his role well in Dune. And yeah, he's uh, it's a really good movie based on sort of like some fantastic books, a fantastic narrative, especially for a Game of Thrones fan. It has some parallels. Mm, maybe but that that one doesn't suck. But David Lynch, he sucks in my opinion. Razor Head is David Lynch, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's utter bollocks. It's awesome. Yeah. No, it's just terrible. It's the, the bit with the turtle uh, that freaked me out first time watching it. It's just so the it's turtle just, baby. I mean, thing, I, yeah. get, I totally understand, like loads of shit about it, but it's still shit. Um, <sighs> it depends on your interpretation. If you sort of, oh, I understand the interpretations. Yeah. I understand that you can take all sorts of interpretations from it. I studied it in film studies. Yeah, we did. But media, yeah. it's shit. It's just bollocks. It's infuriating toss. It's not uh, something that I rush back to watch. Yeah. Having watched it once. It, but, uh, it's one of those things that I put into the category of I'm glad I've watched that because it makes other films better. I mean, the thing is, like, the tricky like, nature, though, is like, in the. That art, it's like impact, and you still remember that today. I, I still remember scenes from that probably to the day I die, worryingly. The in heaven bit. The chicken dinner, the mm. fucking dancing, and the feet is falling from the top of the stage. Oh all that God. shit. What Mental nonsense. He did Mal- Malhorne Drive, which mm. I also did not like. Oh yeah. It's got, well, it's got, one, or two, it's got yeah. one or two delightful scenes in it. <laughs> Again, <laughs> never I've, seen that actually. To be fair, I've it's watched just, it. I gave up after a razor head. I've watched it, and I've read things about it, and it's deliberately cryptic. Mm. So much so that the only person who really knows what happened is David Lynch. <laughs> but he loves that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's he unfair. Sits, he sits down, has a brandy in his like high back leather chair, some nice and chuckles yeah, about that to himself. Yeah, don't expect people to get your own private movie. Yeah, oh, I, mean, I get Twin Peaks. I, I totally appreciate that. Maybe <laughs> if someone was going to pay me to make the movie that I really wanted to make and that I would really enjoy, and fuck everyone else, maybe I would, but. As a, like a public expression of art, he can suck a dick. <laughs> well, he has that right, yeah. <laughs> I'm probably he's ability. probably not allowed to do that as a public <laughs> expression of art. Actually, he'd probably well. do it as a private expression of art. But if he did that in public, he could get arrested. Isn't all love making a private expression of art? Mm, well, uh, <laughs> jail, <laughs> arguably. Very well. However, in public, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> That's a crime. A sex not crime. in all countries yeah. and I, I don't know yeah I guess it would be count- you could get land yourself on the sex offenders register I'm sure probably would actually yeah depending on where you did it in public don't they have like, like live sex shows in places like in Spain and stuff like, yeah but they're, they're, they're live sex shows but they're not done like in a public place they're done in a private well venue. a club yeah. is pretty public no it's not that's a private club isn't it oh, that's right. the point Scott of it, like, loads yeah. of people there watching it's not yeah, like yeah. in the park or yeah something. yeah that's what in, in the public would be <laughs> Or on the top of a hill, yeah. Like, yeah. telling everyone. Like, Hello, in, morning. You know, in the middle of the high street, like John Lennon. Who was it? What was that story about the thing? The uh... oh. oh, this you can talk about this because it yeah. definitely this sucks definitely for them sucked. too. We saw a, a clipping that someone had posted on the internet from a local newspaper. Uh, a gentleman and a lady uh, were admitted to hospital ah. with some fairly serious injuries. The mm. uh, the gentleman uh, had been cooking sausages. <laughs> Frying them in a pan whilst his lady friend uh, gave him oral gratification. So she's got his sausage in her mouth. <laughs> He's got his sausage in his pan. Yeah. He accidentally flicks hot oil down her back. Oh. Oh. She's obviously surprised by this. So she bites down. Yeah. Is he like at least a few inches less of a man now? I, I believe he retained his manhood. Oh. Uh, but. Pack of ice and straight to hospital. Well, right. the story doesn't quite end there uh. because in reaction to having his cock almost bitten off, he hit her with the sausage pan. Oh. <laughs> so after strenuous questioning at the hospital, because obviously social services got involved in the case where the man looks like he's had his cock half bitten off. And he's hit his girlfriend with a red hot frying pan. She was admitted to the hospital. It doesn't sound like it was one like hit to the head because she was in the hospital with serious burns two black eyes and a broken cheekbone fucking hell so that fucking sucks he probably just went fucking mental I mean 
I think that's beat horrible. His, beat his girlfriend off his cock with a. F- but maybe if someone tried well, that, to bite that, my that, cock that, off, it would thing. be instinctive. Like, point, I'm not sure. I'm not, he, by that point, when someone is like already been halfway through your cock, they cease being your girlfriend and start being your enemy. I suspect. Just on instinct. <laughs> yeah. On that, like in those, like I know, because I, I, that's a horrific event for all concerned. That sucks. But I can see, I could, I could see an event where he's like watched Judge Dredd recently, like the like, new one. I. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, well, like, what's her face? Ma- Mama. Yeah, she she, she uh, emasculated off. like her, her pimp. That's how she started to climb to power. Is that in the film? That's her backstory. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. Oh, that sucks. That's probably not getting a sequel. <laughs> really? That yeah. really does fucking suck because that was so well done. It was like a perfect sort of like little, uh, yeah, Joe's Dread feature. Yeah, like, from one of the 2000 AD. Home video sales might. Uh, Give it a chance, but they were significantly higher than the cinema takings. There were huge numbers, but they've said that's nah, probably not going to happen. It is a shame. Mm-hmm. On the flip side of like the the biting uh, limbs off your loved ones, like which also Rims. sucks. Well, <laughs> appendages. Like the um, uh, the flip around with that was I actually read a story much further back than that where uh, like a, a, a husband apparently was sort of like he was doing the uh, the washing up. And like his wife offered him a bite of a sandwich, so he just like takes a bite, and then like she's like shocked because like just like because he's just taking a fucking nosh through, and he looked around and he's actually taken sort of like up to the uh, the second knuckle of a finger off because she'd been holding it wrong. It's like oh, hold your hand flat, it's like feeding the horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Whoa, that yeah. sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, what are on about stuff? Dark Knight Rises blows. Oh. I thought we were going to throw that in for just a free for all at the end because it's like there's so much wrong with that movie. Ah, uh, fuck it, let's do this. I quite, I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I watch you it, you don't even sound like you believe that, man. Every time I watch it, Bane gets better and better. I think Bane's awesome. Oh, but c- everything combo. Else is... <laughs> I really hated, I really hated the spin punch thing you did. That's the only thing that Bane did that in I really theory, hated. It's good. No, it's. Sh- stupid in as theory fuck. it's awesome it just no. looks like it didn't connect yeah it looks bollocks in theory uh, in, if they'd done a good move that would have looked good I, there's the theory they did cool move, they did yeah. something that was shit I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I think stumbled upon part of the problem like having watched it back again like um Matt Hardy, obviously a capable sort of like. Fan. Matt Hardy, every time. Tom man. Hardy, Team God Extreme. Damn it. Matt Actually, Hardy was a capable you, of fighter. Yeah, he was you, a, an exceptional high fire. Do you know what's fucked up? Like every time, I like, I think like Tom first, and I think that's the wrong one. I guess <laughs> Matt, right? Uh, but Tom Hardy, obviously a capable of fighter from sort of like Bronson, all the other shit he's done. But I don't think he suits that build, and like he was notably slower than like if you watch The Warrior. He's like um, notably faster than when he was like bulked up. Like he's not used to carrying yeah, the weight. That's how they shoot it. Like. Yeah, they yeah, but, find fast yeah, but the can, they, there's already like twenty minutes to like, speed people up, isn't there? Uh, but you know, I mean, maybe. and there's like there's one sequence right towards the end where he punches through a pillar, and you're like, or, really or, though, if all it, the fight sequences had been at that speed, that would have been satisfying to yeah. watch. Mm. That's not man. poor choreography, though, rather than Tom Hardy being shit. Though. No, it's not Tom Hardy being shit. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he doesn't suit the build for his fighting style. And they had to bulk up to become Bane, but then you've got all this extra weight to deal with, and you've got to sort of, like, still... Tr- you used to be more mobile. You're also, like... Christian Bale's taller than Tom Hardy, isn't he? Significantly. Yeah, so Hardy's, it's, like, almost uh, made it quite difficult. Yeah, but he's, he's, like already, he's already dealt with that in, like, stuff with Bronson. Yeah, Bronson was actually Christian more about like shooting six, angle. Six foot something, it was only six foot. Or six six foot, but it would be like six foot one or two in Batman suit. They yeah. like put lifts on a uh, thingy to make him, I think it was like 5'11", foot or six foot or something. For certain scenes, like the, the outdoor fight he seen. Yeah. Another thing about it though was the, the like, complete lack of sacrifice. There was like a notable sacrifice in each of like uh, the two priors of the trilogy. And then everyone gets off scot-free and they should have either taken out either um, Fox or Alfred. Should have killed Alfred. Yeah. If they'd done it like stylish where it's been like Bane beats Alfred to death in front of Batman before he can get to him yeah. and then when Batman piles in and gives everything he's got and it looks fucking awesome and Bane still fucking whacks him out that would have been poetic. It would have been. It would have made a lot more sense of the film in its context. And they could have had like the, it would have made the ending better if they'd had the flip around where sort of like he was then sat at the cafe and he thinks he sees Alfred at the next table but it's not Alfred or he's just not there. Would have been good. Yeah. It just really riled up my fanboy sensibilities. It just it shat on the canon. Yeah. 
Bane, al- although impressive, wasn't what I wanted. No Venom. Yeah, that was. A, I could live without Venom, but they never really explained the face mask dynamic, either, or what, what exactly was keeping the pain at bay. Didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, Bruce Wayne turns his back on Gotham City twice in that film. It <laughs> seems that after getting rid of Two Face and the Joker, he thought, "There's no crime in Gotham now. I'll hide in my house." And then at the end, uh, it's like, "I've saved Gotham from a you know rigged up nuclear explosive." It, it doesn't matter that the city's in a state of anarchy right now. I'll fuck off. I don't know. The first thing, though, I thought the whole deal with that was supposed to be the police were taking it back and there was less corruption and because of the them thinking that Batman was the bad guy and chasing the costume guys down and there was more support for the D- DA's office and everything, that that was kind of... That was the broader ploy of him doing that. Yeah, but then the, the society was taking back control. That was why he disappeared. I, I agree that that's why they put it there. But for me, my image of Batman is that even if he eradicated every single last piece of crime in Gotham City, he'd still be patrolling every night, and he'd still like be a presence and probably making things worse because it's that kind of mindset that he has. Which leads on to like the mm-hmm. other problem, uh, well, one of many other problems, like uh, the fact that he's been retired for eight years, but yeah, he goes to the hospital and he's completely fucked up. So it doesn't make sense that he's done that amount of damage to himself in the first two films, and then eight years of like doing nothing, and somehow he's just like wasted the cartilage of both his knees. And, like it's just like it doesn't. He's not been living that hard a life. Oh, but now I'm just gonna go and fucking be Batman again, just like that. Exactly. It doesn't make any he sense. He gets that weird, crazy knee support thing that allows him to kick through a wall. Yeah, without yeah. Down, like completely breaking any of his. I know. Um, I know. Yeah. It, it makes you think that, doesn't it? It makes you go, yeah, bullshit. But no, you just have to remain positive and just go fucking. You know what I mean? Fox is a legend. Yeah, but how is he? No, no. But how has he damaged himself to that extent? That's what I mean. He's been five years retirement. And he, he didn't fuck himself up that much in like the end of. Uh, he's not wearing hockey pads. Yeah, you know he's fucking. He's 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 smashing shit up, and he that's why he's so mm. fucked up, I suppose. Oh, another thing though, while well, we're still on Dark Knight Rises, like uh, the bit where he escapes prison, chucks the rope back in for all the convicts to escape. Batman would never do that. It makes no fucking sense. Yeah, and then walks home from South America. Yes. Is that yeah. South America? I thought it was supposed to be in the Middle East somewhere. Oh, I God. thought it was South America. Well, it makes sense that you walked home from South America. That's that's actually possible. I mean, it would have taken fucking a hell of a long I must time. Admit, I thought it was like possible. Middle East or somewhere. Whereas from the Middle East, mm. that's also possible, but way more difficult. It took him a month. Well, from the Middle East. Like well, it took him half a month, and then he spent the rest of the time well, during that Pentrell still on the Gotham Bridge. So oh, he yeah. could make a dra- dramatic entrance. <sighs> I don't think it was any of those places or there's some serious continuity errors going on in this film <laughs> I think you've hit the nail on the head my issue with the bat pod is is your issue that bat pods can destroy yeah the fucking bat pod can destroy a tumbler you see Catwoman take a few out with it the bat pod which is the escape vehicle of the tumbler it's like, mm. we'll build a massive tank thing but we'll build a little tiny bike inside it as an escape vehicle that's actually significantly more powerful and useful Hasn't it got though the same guns that the tumbler uses? So that Two makes off. sense. It's got half of them. Yeah. So doesn't that make sense? No, not to me. Not in my mind. I would have thought the tumbler is the only thing that could take out a tumbler. But, but you they, see them like going have... at each other, and it it doesn't really do anything. Uh, and then he turns into the bike, and it does do something. Mm. Surely something did something to the tumbler to turn it into the bike, though. He he got he got crashed, didn't it, in the second uh, one? Yeah. How about he's got a flying tank with giant armaments on that he doesn't use to take out the tumblers? Instead, he gets out and has a fight. Um, <laughs> well, shit, any, any other shit that sucks? Well, there's the legacy. Oh, and that's left with for Batman. Ben Affleck. Let's ben, discuss ben Affleck. Affleck. He's the man. It's the just man that sucks so much Batman. for me to <laughs> begin, really. I just, I get, I understand there's so many things. I understand the Kevin Smith defence. I've read it. I've understood that. I disagree with it. I think Ben Affleck is shit. Mm. And as much as I love Kevin Smith, and I, I genuinely do think he's ace, when he voices a strong opinion about something, it's you know, kind of a bad sign to me because I almost always disagree with him, especially where Affleck is concerned. Affleck. Start a Kickstarter campaign to take every Ben Affleck performance and digitally reimpose Keanu Reeves over it. Yes! 
I, you, well, you know, you've spoken to my heart in that one, so you know. Yeah, but Keanu Reeves is the chosen one. Keanu amazing. Reeves is amazing. Uh, equally shit at acting. I don't understand it either, but Keanu Reeves is amazing. I'll give him a break again. Ben He's Affleck done a lot is of good shit. Stuff. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, Keanu Reeves actually has done a lot of good stuff. Uh, but yes, Keanu Reeves has actually <laughs> done a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Maybe Keanu Reeves is just like intrinsically a more enjoyable person to watch than Ben Affleck. He's just a better human being. <laughs> oh, that's actually possibly true. Mm. Sorry, Ben Affleck. I think it probably is. I know that's. I it's like. It's like hard. I, I don't like to judge people, but given the, the format of this show, I'm going to. Yeah. And uh, Ben Affleck, you have been judged and you are shit. I like him as a douchebag. I think he should be a douchebag more. It's your natural nature. Next. I can. Let's rapid fire some things that suck. What else sucks? <sighs> porn stars. They do. All the porn stars are getting AIDS again. Mm, mm. Shit. Mm. Vacuum cleaners. They suck. They suck hard. Uh, becoming lactose intolerant. That does suck. Has that happened? It can do, and it probably does happen to most people. Babies. I love milk. They Wait, suck. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Suckling pig. That sucks. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> we should get this out of our system in the first episode, I think, so we don't have to do it again. <coughs> what else sucks? Black holes. This is true. They suck. Felchers. Yeah. Somebody who's, you know, scarily overweight, who's ta- about to take a, a bite of something they absolutely adore. They suck. Mr. Oogie Boogie from the Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm. He sucks. He sucks. Mm. Mm. Vampires. They mm. suck. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Well, that sucked. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did. Oh, if well. you need to pick me up, check out the back catalogue of things we like. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it, but I'm face palming. Mm. Are you? Mm-hmm. That sucked as well. Well, no, it was also awesome. The smashing peanut M and M's on her head. Try that. That sucks, but it's also fun. Yeah, as a goodbye, uh, a game that sucks. Try and break a peanut M and M on your own forehead. Um, it sounds like this. <laughs> oh, failure. Yeah, that does suck. I think I got a little ring of bruises coming up from that. You've got a couple of lumps, mm. but uh, it's you know a game that we definitely don't advise for health and safety reasons that anyone plays at home. But if you do, get in touch. <laughs> Let us know how you feel. Yeah, and our contact details are things we like at hotmail dot com. If you want to get in touch with us and tell us about anything that sucks or really bum us out, uh, I'm gonna go and sit in the bath in the dark. <laughs> I'm gonna cry myself to sleep. I'm going to go punch an innocent. I'm going to go to an old people's home. <laughs> oh, God. Stuff sucks, people. Stuff sucks. Remember, you will never be an astronaut. Bye. <laughs> Fuck your dreams. <laughs> Oh, it's left me feeling a little queasy.